Welcome to the Wednesday Night Showdown, brought to you by your Tampa Bay area Mazda dealers. Tonight, the race homestand continues in league baseball for the wrap-up game of this two-game set against the Arizona Diamondbacks. The Rays sporting the best record in the American League. And by virtue of a 64 and 43 mark, they're in first place by one half game in front of the Boston Red Sox. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tropicana Field and another evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson. I'm Dwayne Stats. So good to have you looking in tonight. Todd Callis along in just a few moments. Rays winners last night, five to two. They have built quality through versatility. Nobody fits that bill better than Ben Zobris, whether it's on defense or in the lineup. And tonight, he's hitting cleanup. Well, Ben Zobris, first of all, he goes to the All-Star game, and he says, okay, if I'm an All-Star starting in the second half or after the All-Star break, I'm going to have to turn it up a notch. And this is exactly what he's done, starting with that series in Toronto. His average at 381. More impressive than that is his on-base percentage, which is at 447. And guess what? He's getting it done from both sides of the plate. Right-handed, he's hitting 400. Left-handed, he's hitting 370. Continues to be very dangerous. An important spot tonight for the Rays. On the mound for the Rays is going to be Jeremy Hellickson. And you can see what he's done in his last seven starts. A 6-0 record, 209 earned run average. The team has won all seven of those starts. He's comfortable mechanically on the mound right now. That has led to a repeatable delivery. He's now able to put his pitches where he wants them. And when you're able to do that, the confidence starts to build and the results will follow. Here's a look at his last start when he defeated the Yankees in New York on Friday. Gave up just a run on four hits in the six innings he worked. Striking out three and walking two, making 102 pitches. And tonight, Pellickson goes after win number 11. The trading deadline has come and gone. And when we come back, as that clock kicked down, Todd Callis will review the comings and goings. them at 22 and 4 
in the month of July. Tampa Bay and Arizona wrapping up this two-game series. Rays victorious last night, 5-2. to two. July 31st marks the trade deadline where you do not need to have players clear waivers. It was at 4 o'clock today, and a couple of teams in the AL East over the last 24 hours did add to their starting rotation for the Red Sox. They add Jake Peavy to the rotation from the Chicago White Sox. They traded Jose Iglesias in a three-player deal. Bud Norris is acquired by the Orioles from Houston. They're playing each other tonight, so they actually had to just switch some players within the two clubhouses. Jason Hamill, the former Ray, goes on the DL for Baltimore. And Jesse Crane acquired on Monday for our, by the Rays from the Chicago White Sox. He'll help in the back end of the bullpen after he comes off the DL right now with a little shoulder strain. Joe Madden said before the game the way his team is going, not necessary that they had to make a move today. Well, you're always looking to make your group better, and if there was a way to make it better, Andrew would have done that. But, I mean, I'm very satisfied and happy with what we have here. Uh, the chemistry is outstanding. The way they interact is beautiful to watch every day. And we have a lot of different uh, abilities and skills to, to offset different moments. So, um, again, you're always to make, uh, looking to make yourself better. But uh, with this group and the way they're playing right now, I'm okay. Why not be okay? Those guys are okay, too. Wow, they're having a great time up there. Dwayne Stats and Brian Anderson are going to answer your questions tonight on a Web Wednesday. Tweet your questions to at SunSportsRays with the hashtag AskRays, and those two will have as many answers as possible. We're ready for baseball on a Wednesday. Jeremy Hellickson with the recently added Ryan Roberts from AAA Durham in the lineup tonight as Wade Miley. There he is. The lefty will go for the Diamondbacks. Enjoy all the action of the Rays and the D-backs right around the corner here on Sunspot. Tossing seven complete games, more than any other team in baseball has hurled all season. The only member of the Rays staff without a complete game is Jeremy Hellickson. And tonight, he looks to join the party and be in the center of the pitcher's post-game lead. Welcome to the Wednesday Night Showdown, brought to you by your Tampa Bay Area Mazda dealers. The Rays again tonight square off against the National League's Arizona Diamondbacks. We'll take a quick look at the starting lineup presented by Sweet Bay Supermarkets. Gerardo Parra will lead it off. Parra in right field for Arizona. Martin Prado 
will hit second and play third. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. The DH, Eric Chavez. Aaron Hill hits fifth in front of Cody Ross. A.J. Pollock in center. Will the Avis catches again tonight? Cliff Pinnock in the shortstop will hit ninth. Well, taking the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays is going to be right-hander Jeremy Hellickson making his 22nd start of the season. 10 and 3 on the year, an ERA of 4.48. These numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. And though that win total of 10 has really picked up his last seven starts, the team's won all seven. Jeremy in that span, 6 and 0, 2.09. Pitching with a lot of confidence right now and looking to keep it rolling. Let's take a look at the defense for the Rays as it lines up behind him. A little bit different look in the outfield left to right. Full Jennings and Myers. Ryan Roberts will be back at third base facing his old team. Escobar, Zobrist, and Rodriguez complete the infield. And Jose Lobaton will be behind the plate. There's a lot of speculation when Ryan Roberts was lifted for pinch hitter at Durham in their game. Last night, here he is back with the Rays with Matt Moore going on the disabled list. And so Roberts in there playing third base tonight. Evan Longoria will DH. We are set to play baseball. Here's Para, the right fielder, and the first pitch of this game delivered by Jeremy Hellickson. It's a strike call. First pitch presented by Pincher Penny. There's Evan Longoria. He'll be in the lineup, but not playing third base. Another strike, 0 2. Toronto Para at 270 on the year. Outfielder from Venezuela. Pitch is low. He was one for three last night. In fact, hit by a pitch. His first time up. That's how Roberto Hernandez started his night last night and then. Wound up going the distance and came one out away from throwing a shutout. Chop right side. That's going to be a fair ball. And Sean Rodriguez at first tonight makes the play unassisted. Elbow soreness that developed his last time out for Matt Moore. Yeah, and, and with all these off days coming up and the opportunity to go to a four-man rotation, you don't take any any chances with Matt Moore. Not not a big deal. It's not something that he feels on every single pitch, which is a very good sign. But while you have the time, you let that elbow calm down and have him fresh and strong for the stretch run. Good move. Smart move. Well, that uh, moves right into the scenario that Joe Madden painted. There's no way you know when you're going to have to put a guy on the disabled list. Prado up here taking that first pitch for a ball. But the, the Rays thinking already in the month of August with the off days, it could be a month of winning, but a month of regrouping and heading strong into September. Yeah, I mean, think about that. And a great change up here by Jeremy Ellickson. But think about that. You've got a well-rested David Price, you know, far below what his innings should be. He's going to be ready to go. And then Matt Moore is going to get a little bit of a breather here. And he's going to come back fine. In fact, Matt said, listen, if this is September, October, I could pitch. Yeah. I could definitely pitch through this. But while you have the opportunity with the off days, just give him a break. Let that thing be 100%. And then all of a sudden you get him fresh. Goodness. It's hard to imagine that these guys could get any better, but... Nice to know you've got some fresh arms down the stretch. Well, it speaks to the depth that the Rays have right now in the pitching department. Low, two and two. Jeremy Hellickson out there for the 22nd time. The Rays have gone 10 and 1 against the National League this year. A major part of their success. Headed out of play by Prado. Hellickson winning six straight decisions over his last seven starts. 
Kirk Gibson, the skipper in his fourth season. Skipper of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Man of the hour last night, Roberto Hernandez. When you think about this Diamondback lineup, too, it's you know it's an off night when your best chance to score was in the first inning with nobody out and runners on first and second. And that's when Paul Goldschmidt came to the plate after that hit by pitch, a base hit by Aaron Hill. Hernandez gets him to roll into a double play, and then it was off and running for Roberto. Up the left side, that's a fair ball. Off the sidewall, kicking back to Fold, who unloads in a hurry. But into second base goes Prado with his 20th double of the year. Well, Martin Prado, a very good hitter, handles the bat well, will use the whole field. Battles Jeremy Hellickson here, and after looking bad on a changeup early, gets one a little bit elevated right here. And he is able, see right there on top of the plate, moved up in the box a little bit, able to shoot this ball down into the corner. A nice adjustment there made by Prado in order to pick up that double. So scoring opportunity in the first by Arizona with Paul Goldschmidt up there. Getting 300 on the year and 383 with runners in scoring position. Set a fastball for a strike. The top RBI man in the National League. Upstairs. Say this for Goldschmidt. He looks like a hitter up there. There's no question about that. Captain Caveman. I mean, he gets in there a little squat and gets that bat wrapped back behind his back, ready to uncoil and take a rip. And you know, it's amazing that he's been able to put up the numbers that he has when you know that he's the focus of every pitching staff, every city they go to. That pitch in and it hits him. Goldsmith hit by a pitch. You're right about that. When you look at their lineup, just all you have to do is look at the production numbers. They immediately pop out at you, and he's the guy that you don't want to let beat you. Yep. And so every time they go and play somebody, he becomes the focus, and yet still able to come through more times than not. That caught him right on the inside of that right elbow, and you certainly understand the grimace. That does not feel good in there. Second man that Hellickson has hit this year. Eric Chavez DHing. Pitch is a strike. Chavez had an even 300. He hit the home run last night with two outs in the ninth that denied Roberto Hernandez the shutout. Hit it right down the right field line and off the foul pole. Well, Hernandez was very sharp last night. A strike takes the count to one and two. Can you think of any pitches that Roberto left out over the plate with elevation? It seemed like if he had a ball elevated, it was close to the hitter mm -hmm. or it was far off the plate. Nothing elevated out over the white. Everything that was out over the plate was, you know, a little bit above the knees down to the shins. And that will point to his success all the time. Cut the miss. He got Chavez to chase the changeup. So two gone. First strikeout of the night for Hellickson. And probably not exactly where Jeremy wanted this, but you got a, a guy that's down in the count, have a tendency to expand his zone. And he goes well off the plate trying to reach that changeup, and as you would well imagine, couldn't. 
Here's Aaron Hill. These two have faced each other from Hill's time with the Toronto Blue Jays. Now playing second base for the Diamondbacks. He's one of three lifetime against Jeremy. There's pitches in there. Strike call. Prado doubled. Goldschmidt hit by a pitch. Two men on with two men out in the first. Covered up by Lobaton. The change up. Ray start the night, a half game up on Boston. Arizona running second in the National League West. Three and a half behind the Dodgers. The Dodgers have won four in a row, and the Diamondbacks have dropped three straight. Three and a half out. Powell out of play. It's one and two. So the Dodgers have been very hot, taking over first in the National League West. Diamondbacks actually have spent the better part of the year in first place. In that NL West race, but not now. The Rays will see both these clubs from the West. The Rays take on the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers on their next road trip. The high chop to short, picked on the short hop, and a backhand by Escobar. Safe to call at first, and the bases are going to be loaded. And I'll tell you what, first of all, that was a tough hop that Escobar is going to have to contend with off the bat of Aaron Hill. And he comes in, lets it bounce, and takes that short hop on the backhand. Well, this is a tough way to go after a ball. Then has to throw on the run. And the timing right there, a little bit off. And right there, down at first base, Phil Cuzzy says that Sean Rodriguez did not keep that foot on the bag. It was awfully close. It was close. Tough to see from those angles. And obviously, probably tougher Phil to see, but that was the call. Goes as an infield hit for Aaron Hill. The bases are loaded. Cody Ross becomes the hitter. Ground ball through the left side for a base hit. Prado's going to score. Goldsmith heads to the plate. The throw cut off. It's two to nothing, Arizona. So on the first pitch Cody Ross gives Arizona a 2 nothing lead. Now there have been so few hiccups by the Rays defensively and I know that went down as an infield hit but more times than not we're used to that play being made. It's not and Cody Ross immediately is able to cash in for the Diamondbacks that extra base runner right there. He just hammers one in the hole and everybody run with two strikes and full a little bit of trouble getting this out of his glove. Goldschmidt's able to get in. Hill at second with Ross at first. AJ Pollock steps in, getting the start in center field tonight. And there's a first pitch strike. Twenty-five year old outfielder. Change up. Nothing at two. He spent most of last season with their AAA affiliate at Reno and hit 318 there. O2. Tapper foul. On the kidding seventh. Kirk Gibson's lineup. Two runs in, two men on, two strikes to count to Pollock. Fastball wide. 
Pollock takes it off the plate. Will Davis, the catcher on deck. The one, two. Outside. Two and two. Arizona with two in the first. Pollock pops this one back. That's going to be out of play. Holding the count right there, 2-2. Two, two. Pollock out of Notre Dame. It's a first-round pick. By the Diamondbacks. Two, two and it's lifted to the right side, shallow right. Will Myers is there to retire the side. Two men scored, two men are left. Rays coming in to hit. Bottom of the first. John Rodriguez assuring uh, Jamie Nelson and uh, the rest of the Rays that his foot was on the bag and that the throw beat Hill. And you know what? That's why I went to the thought that the foot may have come off the bag because it was clear that the throw got there in time. There was no way that he was just calling him flat out safe. Thought he had to be the only choice he had was the foot coming off the bag where it appears obviously the foot was on the bag. It appears that the call was that the play was beat out by the runner and that clearly was not the case. The throw was there in time for the out. That, that's a huge turn because it ends up costing the race two runs. It's always tough enough to get three outs. Yeah. Very difficult to get four. So it's 2 nothing Arizona and Desmond Jennings leads off. Shortens on the bat. Takes the pitch upstairs. Race facing left-hander Wade Miley. You can see making his 22nd start. His season numbers brought to you by Coventry Healthcare of Florida. Jennings takes a strike. One and one Desmond getting 261 overall 333 against left handed pitching. Miley will not give you a lot of time to think about what you want to do up there unless you step out on him. And that's what Jennings is already doing. Yeah well he wants to engage his defense work quickly. He knows what he wants to do. An awful lot of fastballs from this left. Chopper towards second. Hill gloves and throws. Jennings is out number one. Rest of the Rays lineup presented by Sweet Bay Supermarket. 
Evan Longoria hitting second following Jennings and then Will Myers. Ben Zober, Sean Rodriguez, and Ryan Roberts down the middle. Yudel Escobar, Jose Lobatone, and then Sam Fold in left field hits ninth. Evan up in the second spot, hitting third last night. He was 0 for 5. Bounds a pitch out of play. And when you see Miley's breakout, he is, he gets the right handed hitters. He is over 70% fastballs, and it gets even, you know, easier to figure out from there. A lot of fastballs early in the count and behind in the predictable counts. So the Rays should be able to just be able to hone in on what he's trying to do. Yeah. Loves the slider with two strikes to the right handed hitters and the lefties. Devin's breakout. 345 against lefties. This one is down. They say Miley does get a little cut action on his pitches. The 16 game winner last year. Yeah. 16 and 11. In 29 starts. ERA in the low threes. And a cut and a miss. He throws a fastball and gets Longoria. Elevation. Brought that one up just a little bit and added a mile or two onto the velocity. 92 on this pitch by Miley. Actually, not even where he wanted it. You can see he wanted it in on the hands. That ball sails up and away, but the result still goes his way. Two up, two down, and Will Myers stepping in. Pitch moves away off the plate. And Miley's been on a nice little run since the beginning of June. He went into that start that he had on June the 5th. He was 3 and 5 with an ERA of over 5. Since then, in, in 10 starts, just a 4 and 3 record. However, a 2.69 earned run average. He's given up three earned runs or fewer in all of those starts, two earned runs or fewer in six of the 10. Swings through that changeup. And that was a pretty changeup from a lefty. Great arm action on that pitch by Miley. Fastball away. It's now three and one. Miley out of Louisiana. Born in Hammond, Louisiana, in the New Orleans area, to southeastern Louisiana. And there's a strike on the corner. Rays actually drafted him out of high school in 2005, and he went to college instead. Boy, dots that fastball right on the outside corner for the second strike. Full count to Will. And a fastball cut and a miss. A one two three inning for Miley in the first. On to the second. It's two nothing Arizona.
by Mazda. Visit your Tampa Bay area Mazda dealers. By Toyota, let's go places. By Coventry Healthcare. Coverage so you can keep living the life you want. Go live. We've got you covered. And by Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. When cancer strikes, strike back with CyberKnife. Available at Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology. On to the second inning we go. Well, the Ave is the catcher is going to lead it off. The Ave is catching both games here in this short two game set. Lifted up the right side, a long run by Myers, but he will not be able to get there. All falling behind the bullpen mound. Cliff Pennington, the shortstop, their number nine hitter next. And then the top of the order, Para. There's a curveball and a big one for a strike. 0 oh, 2. Starts this ball in off the plate. Nieves gives up on it and it just clips the inside corner. Ground ball to the shortstop. Escobar's throw to first. One away in the second. It'll be interesting to see. And, you know, Jeremy Hellickson, his changeup is always going to be a big pitch for him. But after the success that Hernandez had with his last night, and obviously a, a different style, Hernandez has more late finish on it. Than Jeremy's, who just kind of dies and never gets to the plate. I mean, you got to believe, you know, Jeremy said, I'm going to watch Roberto Hernandez and see how he pitches to these hitters, try to formulate my game plan since I've never seen him before. It's Pennington fouling it back for a strike. That changeup, something that Hellickson has had dating back to his second year in the Rays minor league system. He pitched just a handful of innings in 2005 and then. The next year at Hudson Valley started to dabble with that changeup. One and one to count to Pennington. And that has made all the difference for Hellickson. That changeup. Ball and two strikes. One thing we have not seen a lot of this year from Hellickson that we did see some last year is that cutter. Yeah, he, he pretty much has shelled that pitch. And you know what? It, I think for the best. He really, the, the way that he's able, especially right now, the way that he's able to manipulate the zone with his fastball and that change up in the curveball, that's all he needs. It's something that he can add down the road, maybe in an occasional tight spot. He wants to go to it, but his three pitch repertoire is good enough. And he's shown that in the last month, month and a half. We got strike two to Pennington on the change, and now this one is lifted in a right back to the track, and Myers is there. Pennington lift the fastball back into right field, and Myers had the range, two gone. So two outs in the second inning. The big key for Jeremy Hellickson is you know, to stay away from those pitches at the thigh and at, at the belt. Every pitcher wants to do that, especially with Jeremy. He's not blessed with a ton of movement on that fastball, so he needs to be precise with it. And that's what we've seen over that seven start span where. He's six and zero oh with an ERA barely over two. Everything down, down, down. When you can do stuff like that and just drop in a first pitch hook, something that Para is probably not looking for, immediately gives you the advantage. Gerardo Para, one strike to count. He grounded out to first to start this ball game. It 
Did he go? Yes, he did. Ron Kupka down at third. Says that's a swing. Madden has his club. 21 games over 500. And a swing and a foul tip strikeout. Curveball takes care of Paro. 2 0 Arizona. Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports seasons total up to twelve thousand dollars now. In Zobris leads off the second takes a high fastball and hitting clean up Sean Rodriguez will follow and then Ryan Roberts. It's one and one. Rays are down two to nothing. Diamondbacks scored two in the first. But Arizona's only seven and nine when they score two or more in the first. And that's a little unusual. In fact, that's the worst record in the major leagues. It should be. Scoring two or more in the first. Seven and nine. Two and two. Well, that's something the Diamondbacks are going to have to continue to, to, to add on because this Rays team is going to battle you to the final out. It's one of the fun things about this club, the resiliency of it, not only for stretches of time, but just within a game. Falling down early, team does not get rattled. They do not change their approach. Three, two into center field. Pollock is there. Had a little stutter step coming in, and he made the catch for the first down. Let's check in with Todd Callis right now. Todd? Dwayne, it is a Web Wednesday. A few viewers were wondering what you guys were reading or what you were talking about, BA, on the phone. But the first question is actually about the possibility of a Ray being a rookie of the year. A lot of fans want to know about Will Myers' chances. And also Chris Archer. There's also a guy in the bullpen who hasn't done too poorly either, guys. Back to you. Yeah, there's a whole uh, battle right here on the Ray's roster for the rookie of the year and you've got Archer Myers and Torres you could make a case for any one of those three and then of course we saw the other rookies in contention the Iglesias now with the Tigers traded over from Boston and Nick Franklin of Seattle but uh, it, it would be if you had to pick just from the Rays roster 
It's between those two. It would be quite a challenge which way you go right there, pitching or hitting. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, the run that Chris Archer has gotten, not to take anything away from what Alex Torres has done, but if you're talking about the rookie of the year race with his position in the bullpen, if he's not racking up saves, that's probably going to hurt him. But legitimately, Chris Archer, if he continues to pitch like that, you make the case. But Will Myers has yeah. been extremely productive with the stick, and I think that's a coin flip. Truly, if, if it's between those two guys just on the Rays team, it's a complete coin flip. And this guy, again, not racking up the saves, but oh so important, came on the scene as a long guy, going to be a mop-up guy, had a couple of four-inning outings just to bridge the gap and get through some tough games. And it was so good that Joe Madden was forced to move him to the back end where it's crowded down there, but he just continues to come in and get big out after big out. Ron Roberts takes a strike. Well, Myers, he was impressive from the from the day he came up. I mean, he was hitting home runs on big stages and all of that and, and seemed right at home, whether it was at Fenway or Yankee Stadium right in the middle of a race like this and since the All Star break he's led the major leagues in hitting with his hot streak 16 out of 35 and 12 runs batted in for him in that stretch. So a strong case for Will Myers. Roberts just back from the Durham Bulls. Strike the count. Former diamond back facing his former club. And it's one and one. That'll be the key for Ryan Roberts tonight is not to get too excited at the plate. You're going to get a handful of at bats. It is your former team. You definitely want to have a good game against them. You just got to stay within your game plan. Within your approach off this particular pitcher, not try to do too much. That would, that would be the temptation. Well, he represents some of the depth that the Rays have already. You talk about the trading deadline, and the Rays apparently had some conversations going, but the, as Andrew Friedman said, there's nothing that really fit. And so they do add Jesse Crane, and they figure to have him. Come back from the, the shoulder situation and be available in the not too distant future. And Ryan Roberts, who has been up and down two or three times between the Rays and Durham, gives them some depth. To the pitch foul out of play. And we've seen Ryan Roberts when, when he has come up in this role. He's not gotten discouraged when he's gone back to Durham. Certainly that's not where you want to be. And that would be, you know, something that you can understand a guy getting going down there and you know so he's I feel like a big league player. I am a big league player, but he has accepted you know, accepted it very well. And when he's got opportunities to come back up, even though they may have been limited in case one case in point, just the one game, hit a couple home runs in that game. Able to just come up and continue to do what he can to help the team. Roberts out on strikes. Well, let's hear what Andrew Friedman had to say about the trading deadline. The good thing is we're in a, a fortunate position where we don't have any obvious glaring issues and things that you know we had to address and so it allowed us to be you know a little more selective and we went through and had a lot of different conversations um, and really it was about any way we could you know continue to fortify our depth we were going to be aggressive to do so we actually really like the guys that we have in AAA um, but if we could do something to extend that line that's something that we would have been aggressive to do um, but you know nothing lined up and you know we're happy with the guys we have. Well, they have great depth, and they've actually extended that depth by creating the versatility that this club has featured in the uh, Friedman Madden era. And that's been a big part of keeping this team as successful as it's been. One and one. And they have not been in those years big trading deadline teams. No. 
No, nope. piece here, a piece there. I think in, in past years, you know, you had that desire to like, you know, go make a splash. But this year, and we talked about it, once the trades and the trading deadline and, the, and all the talk started to heat up, and just like Andrew said, not a lot of glaring holes. That really no glaring holes. And Andrew had even said, you know, said if we can upgrade somewhere, we'll look into doing that. But we don't feel like we have to go and address any specific part of this team because they've all been clicking. Well, it's certainly a position of strength. You know, that trading deadline's it's like a poker game. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Uh, and so you, you you don't show your you don't show your hand. There's the Rays in a position where. They didn't necessarily feel as if they had to add a piece. And when they do, they try to do it on more or less on their terms. Escobar fouls it out of play. The count is two and two. Well, the other thing that, that Andrew has said is with all of these discussions regarding players that they like, players that may feel it. All that does is it, it, it potentially sets the stage for off season. Mm -hmm. You know, then you go to the winter meetings and you pick up where those talks left off, and you know you've kind of already done some of the background work on it. Well, so yeah. well, well, they may not have brought anybody in, can still be productive in the long run. And and they're always aware of other talent. Uh, I think a great example of that was Kelly Johnson. Friedman said uh, a couple of weeks ago that. He was a guy that they'd had interest in over the last couple years. Mm -hmm. Runner goes on the 3 2 2 out pitch, and it's skied down the right field line. Foul. A couple of feet foul out of the reach of Para. Well, regarding that uh, trading deadline, let's take a look at tonight's ATT social media poll, which American League East rival. Improve themselves the most at the deadline. DB1 Boston by getting Jake Peavy or the Baltimore Orioles TB2 by getting right hander Bud Norris. Tweet your vote to at Sunsports Rays. What do you got? Well, Norris, here's, here's the deal Peavy has been there, a veteran, and that's good. That's going to be a significant pickup. Escobar drives it high and deep into right center field. And over there, right in front of the wall, by the 370 marker, Para makes the catch to retire the side. Through two, 2-0 two Arizona. Downsides to a 23 and uh, four stretch, but Joe Madden talked about one last night. He talked about with all the success, you do not want to be looking back. 
And of course, you don't want to be looking forward either. So Madden put out a tweet, very simple, very Joe Madden-esque in his wording. He just talked about stay in the present, boys. It was very simple and kind of a madden -y thing to say. He always has motivational notes everywhere in the locker room and wherever players could see it. In fact, on his lineup card last night, he had a very similar sentiment to stay in the moment. Guys. Well, that's what the Rays do. I like the crooked lineup card there. It's a good move. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And a little note to Ben Zobris right beside it. Someone had their eye exam today. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> what an oh, the count to Prado. Our team Prado leading it off here in the third. Ellickson, two balls, no strikes the count to Prado. Goldschmidt hits second and then Chavez. It'll be a strike. It takes the count to two and one. Shot up the left side. That's going to be just foul. Prado already has a double up the left field line in the first when he scored the initial run of the game and just missed an extra base hit here. Boy, just a little bit too quick. A couple of feet. Ellickson facing Arizona for the first time in his career. Been on a great run. Right along with the Rays. Rays 23 and 4, 10 and 1 in interleague play.